And it was decent. Yo, I had a crazy battle that I had the other day against my boy Duncan, son. If you want to get all up in the nitty gritty, you got to go in that thing near deep, son. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I had a little cup match against this guy, man. So he's going to lead up with Murkrow. And if you guys notice the transition from Generation 5 to Generation 6, a lot of things have changed. For instance, in Generation 5, Murkrow wasn't allowed. So on his team, I noticed that he has a Bono B. So I don't want to go for the Vault Switch and or the Thunderbolt to take out the Murkrow, knowing for a while that he could get a plus one in terms of moves if he happens to switch out the Bono B on my Thunderbolt because I do happen to be a Scarf Chin Chow. So now I'm just going to switch into my Duabo to try to get up Entry Hazards in here. He's going to switch out his Bono B. Bono B he hits me with the earthquake and I'm just gonna recover with the berry juice which is also another item that was banned in 5th gen and unbanned in 6th gen so now what that actually does it recovers 20 hit points as opposed to the common orb berries that you would use in 5th gen that will only recover 10 HP in general so now I'm gonna switch to my mischievous just to see if he was like locked or anything like that so now I'm gonna switch out and go and use will -O -O which hits the Merkel which is great and I noticed at the last minute I did not pack the dazzling gleam because I gen a Mischievous as well as a Miss Magius and I have Dazzling Gleam on the Miss Magius but I failed to put it on the Mischievous that would have been so helpful right here but at the same time I would have actually switched out to Dwebble anyway because I would have been faring the Confuse Ray and or the Thunder Wave more importantly the Thunder Wave because what else let's just be real is a Murkrow really going to do onto the opposition anyway all Murkos have to be or more likely are the same you know Eval Light you know with the uh, Thunder Wave Confuse Ray thing going on here with the Foul Play so now he's just gonna hit me with the confuse ray and now he goes to the roots so i go for the bug bite i'm like yo he's pure dark right now hit him for super effective damage and unfortunately for me i smack myself for confusion so i'm not gonna be able to inflict any damage onto the murkrow he's gonna have to switch if he doesn't want to get hit with the rock blast but i'm predicting to switch out into anything so i instead of going for the rock blast decide to go and lay up another layer of spikes spikes happens to deal a lot of damage in Little Cup. Like, Stealth Rock is almost insignificant. When something switches in, you'll see it take like one or two hit points. But like, Spikes, when you accumulate that, that's nuts. So now he's gonna make a bold decision, go for the Swords Dance, torching another thing that is unbanned, I think, from fifth generation onto six because it's like speed boost plus two. You go for the quick attack. Quick attack priority as well as speed is top notch in Little Cup. It is almost everything. And coupled alongside with the occasional Timbor. Speaking of Timbor, my god, I'm looking at my party, I'm like, yo, I don't have Dazzling Gleam. This thing, I'm pretty sure, does have the knockoff because, you know, Conquer Elders and OU carry the knockoff, and knockoff is pretty huge in 6th gen. So I'm like, what am I gonna do against this thing? So I figured I'd just, you know, stay in and go for an attacking move. I already set up three layers of spikes, my stuff rocks. I don't have Aerial Ace on this thing. Which is a bummer in this case scenario, so I have no choice but to stay in anyway because I don't want anything else being inflicted with any unnecessary damage as of yet. I'm so regretting the fact that I don't have Dazzling Gleam. I wouldn't want for the Shadow Ball anyway here because I do have the Valite known for what I would have been able to survive the knockoff anyway. And then right here, switched up moves to reveal the Dazzling Gleam so I'll be sure enough to knock it out because if I went for Dazzling Gleam first, he's more than likely going to want to switch and save his Timber for a little bit later on. So Assault Vest and or Evalite Timber with a gun is freaking deadly man I don't even know why I'm not packing one myself so I switch into my chin child which is choice scar so I'm gonna lock myself into hidden power of fire he brings in this thing again and I'm like okay this thing is so annoying I can't necessarily kill this thing even if I want to in hindsight go for the two hit KO I can't do that so he's gonna go for the confuse ray he knows in a sense that my chin child or at least I think that he knows that chin child packs a bow switch so it's not ideal for him to want to go for the thunder wave knowing for that I can switch into my chin child that deals super effective damage onto the murkrow but he decides to go out and use thunder wave anyway so now my hound door is power fused but beside all that despite all of that he's gonna break out of confusion and hit an 85% an accurate move to knock out the Murkrow. Houndor, that was extremely legendary, but let's not celebrate yet because as they do in the Dragon Ball Z show out of a new season, man, when you destroy a threat, a new threat emerges of one episode later on, and this Fletchling is that new threat. So now I'm just going to switch into my Chin Shot because I know that he's going to absorb both maybe Acrobatics and Brave Bird and or the Flame Charge pretty handily, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, I can't lock myself onto an Electric Top Attack because he still has the Bunnerby waiting to 
the wings. You don't know how bad I wanted to vault switch right here, but I can't do that. So unfortunately for me, the hydro pump missed, and I'm gonna have to go for another acrobatics of my own to get around this thing that's inflicted a whole bunch of acrobatics on me. So it's like, Kashif, how are you gonna get around this thing? This thing is plus two looking at you for critical hits like a sniper scope. But I just remembered that I have the Magnemite, and my Magnemite is Choice Scarf. Gonna lock myself into Thunderbolt, which was risky because, like I said before, he does have the Bunnelby, which he happens to bring in now. So I'm like, okay, is he gonna go for the return? I'm hoping that, pray to God, that he does not go for the return and instead goes to the earthquake here. So I'm bringing my execute, which I guess he also predicted because he said we were Skype battling also because, like, we're playing each other's minds here while we were battling. So we're Skype battling too, and he's like, oh, he's gonna go on to execute. And I'm like, uh, yes, I am actually. So he probably thought I was just playing around, but yeah, I made the obvious switch into execute. So now in comes this Magnemite of his own. I'm gonna go for the protect to see what he would do, and he happens to reveal that he's hidden power, ice, and or fire. So I'm gonna go for the Sun Spore a second every time after missing the initial time that I went for it, but he happens to be not affected by it, which can only mean one thing. This dude, get this, ladies and gentlemen, is Safety Goggles Magnemite. What you know about that? I'm gonna go for a Hydro Pump that is not gonna be enough to take out the Magnemite. One more though would be more than enough to take it out. But he goes for the Vault Switch, which activates my Vault Absorbability, so it allows me to replenish my HP if he's gonna switch up his moves after me missing another Hydro Pump and go for the Flash Cannon. I'm just gonna switch right up into a Magnemite of my own because as long as he's going for the Vault Switch and or the Flash Cannon, it's not gonna inflict any damage onto my own Magnemite, but he happens to switch up that move right then and there and go for the Hidden Power of Fire, which inflicts a lot of damage dropped me, leaving me with three hit points left. I retaliate back with the hidden power fire of my own to knock it out, and then in comes his Bunnelby. So now here was decision time because my Chin Chow does have a significant amount of HP left over thanks to him going for the Vault Switch and replenishing my HP. So now it's at a point where does he go for the Quick Attack and or does he go for the Earthquake? But since my Magnemite happens to be Timid Scarf, which at one point, at one speed point made a hell of a difference, that means that I'm just going to be able to outspeed and go for the hidden power of fire after he takes the spikes as well as the Stealth Rock damage, and that's going to be a good game right then and there too. Oh, definitely a great game. Viewers, I definitely have a lot of fun. Peace! What you doing?